sacrifice. Father God, Lord, receive this sacrifice. We worship you. Church, let's just worship him. Worship the Lord in the splendor of his glory. He's mighty. He's a great God that he may accept this living sacrifice. Oh, we worship you. Father, we glorify your name. Lord, we thank you this morning. Oh, we magnify your God because you are a great God. You are King, O Jehovah. You are mighty, O Lord. Father, that you may accept this living sacrifice. Father, that we may worship you. Oh, Jehovah, be glorified. Be magnified, O Jehovah. We bless your name. Hallelujah, Lord. We worship you. Father, we magnify your name. Thank you, Spirit of the living God. Hallelujah, Lord. Worship you. We glorify your name. Hallelujah. us the privilege Lord that we're able to come into your presence this morning oh God our cry goes out unto you father that you may accept this living sacrifice Lord as we come into your presence father we worship you we glorify your name we lift you up oh God we say you're king and a great God almighty God father we thank you even Lord as we continue Lord to sit in your presence we pray this morning, O Jehovah, that, Lord, you will touch us, a mighty touch from the heavens. Father, you will meet us at our points of need. Jehovah, Lord, you will speak to us in a special way, O Father. May you raise our spirits this morning, O God. Father, that we may engage with you, O God. That, Lord, as you speak to us, O Father, oh, we may accept your word. Father, we may hear from you. Lord, you may touch us, Almighty God. We want to thank you. Father, we bless you. We commit each and every person, oh God, who's going to walk into this auditorium, oh Jehovah Lord. Father, that you will bless them. Bless them with a heavenly blessing. Bless them, oh Jehovah Lord, as they walk in here, oh mighty God. We thank you, Father. We want to bless you this morning, oh Jehovah Lord, because you are a great God. You are King, oh Father. We glorify your name. We worship you, Father. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Let's just celebrate the Lord. Let's celebrate Him. He's been a great God to us. Amen and amen. 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 We thank, we thank the Lord for this morning. He has given us the gifts of life. And even we're able to come into His presence and just worship Him. Able to come into His presence and engage with Him. And we believe that as we sit in his presence, the Lord will touch each one of us. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I believe it's now a very good time. We want to hear from the Lord as he speaks to us. So please welcome with me, Deacon Kimani, who's going to minister to us this morning. Amen. 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 Oh 
and our God this morning want to honor your name. We declare that you alone deserve our praise and our honor, O oh God. We thank you for yet another opportunity that you have given us. That we can be in your presence and you minister unto us, O oh God. Father, as I speak your word, I commit myself unto you. It is you that have given me the sufficiency to do your work, O oh God. Therefore, I surrender all unto you, O God. Father, I surrender everyone listening to my voice, O God. You shall minister to them, O God, according to your will, O God. I also want to take power and authority to frustrate every scheme of the enemy, to bring down every power of the evil one in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we are at your feet. Minister unto us. And this is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We can appreciate God. We can also appreciate our team as we dismiss them. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. We can take our seats. My name is Kimani. I am born again. I love the Lord because he has been so good to me. He has given me hope. I want to sincerely honor God for this opportunity, even to start here and to bring his word. I also want to take this opportunity to recognize the presence of our dad, Bishop Dr. Moffat Kirioba, with the head of state commendation and the wife, Reverend Donna. Let's appreciate them. Let's appreciate them in a better way. It is a great honor for me and a privilege to speak in your presence, our dad. Thank you so much. I also want to thank our senior pastor, Bishop Dr. Paul Habwe, and the wife, even in their absentia, for giving me this opportunity to come and bring the word of God. Let's appreciate them also. I also want to recognize and to appreciate uh, the presence of Pastor Haman Mwashigadi and the wife Maureen. Let's appreciate them. I appreciate the board of elders, the deacons, and all protocols observed, and all of us. Let's appreciate ourselves for being in the house of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Look at your neighbor and tell them, no exam, no graduation. Tell them again, no exam, no graduation. It is in the battlefield that generals come to be known. It is in the battlefield that generals come to be known. I've noted with concern that every time we begin a new year, we are very optimistic. We say, this is my new year. This is my season. This is the year of my breakthrough. And the same culture has been taken even when we begin a new month. Welcome to January, the month of victory. Welcome to February, the month of breakthrough. And the thread continues that way, that way. But down the line, I've noted that there has not been much change. And I became concerned what happens along the way when we say it is a new season, when we say it is my time, when we say it is the year of the Lord. How comes down the line? We have no results to show. I was looking at the results that were released by Senofit at the beginning of the year. And they were saying that 82% of Kenyans described the year 2022 as the most terrible. They had no hope about it. And it became a concern to me how and why 
do things change? That at the end of the period that began with very high level of optimism, we are so down. And I sought the Lord about it. And one of the things that the Lord put in my soul is that for God to take you to a new season, he must subject you to an exam. For you to go to a new season, there must be an exam. And it came clearer and clearer to me that it is true God spoke at the beginning of the year. It is true we had the word of God clearly. It is true we received it with joy. But as the Bible says in Matthew, when the day of trouble came, we fell away. And the Lord convinced me fully that one of the things which make us not to experience what the Lord has promised us is that we fail the exam. And increasingly have been now been able to observe even the patterns of this world. And I've realized that for you to go to a new level, there must be an exam. You cannot legally go to Form 1 unless you have sat for KCPE. You cannot legally go to college unless you have sat for KCSE. You cannot legally graduate unless you have satisfied the board of examiners. Praise the Lord. You cannot be allowed to be a driver on our roads unless you have sat for a driving test and you have been given a license. And I began to ask myself, Several questions about exams. And I realized point number one, people fear exams. No one is comfortable when an exam has been announced. I've been a teacher for a while. And I've seen people when the teachers announce an exam, some people even run away. Because exams are feared. I also realize when it comes to exams, there are three durations. There is the duration before the exam, there is the duration of the exam, and there is the duration after the exam. And of these three durations, the duration of the exam is too short or too small. KCP is done in three days. After someone has been in class for how many years? Eight years. KCSE is done in roughly three weeks. After someone has been in class for how many years? Four years. But the period after the exam is the longest. And I started to remember the last exam I did in college. That was in the year 2004. It's now almost 20 years down the line. And the results that I got from that paper, I am still using them today and until the Lord will come for me. So the duration after the exam is so long, but the duration of the exam is too short. But unfortunately, people fear the exam. Character number three, I realized that when an exam has been administered, some people fail and others 
pass. Bwana asifiwe. Some people fail and others pass. May God help you to pass the exam. May God help you to pass the exam. And number four, I realized that the exam is the bridge between the current level and the next level. We are talking about the new season. And I want without any fear of doubt to submit to all of us that between our current season and the new season that the Lord has promised us, there will be an exam. Hallelujah. I say people fear exams. And you can tell by the silence. Let's appreciate God. Now, does God test us? Does God bring us to an exam? And the big and the clear answer is yes. But unfortunately, most of us have taken the exams of God to be always temptations. And when I search the scriptures, I realize that on the day God administers an exam, the devil is right there to tempt you to check whether you will yield to your desires. James said that let no one think that God can be tempted. But you are tempted when you give in to your evil desires. It is when the, temptation, when the test of God is brought that the devil starts right there and convinces you to look for a shortcut. And the shortcut is to give in to the desires. But brothers and sisters, I want to confirm to us that God tests his people. That God administers exams to his people. I checked in the scriptures and I realized there are many, many people that were tested of God. But in the interest of time, I just want to submit three cases. The first case is Abraham. Media give us Genesis chapter number 22 and verse number 1. And the Bible says, that now it came to pass. After these things, God did what? Hey, God did what? God tested Abraham. And therefore, my brother, my sister, if you are in doubt whether God can test you, he tested Abraham. The Bible says that now it came to pass. After these things, that God tested Abraham. And if you read the entire scripture or the, uh, the chapter, you, you realize that Abraham was requested to sacrifice his only son. And the Bible continues to say that Abraham passed the tests. Because he agreed to offer his son. And I think if you can give us verse 16. Verse 16. Verse 16 of the same chapter. After Abraham had passed the test. God said. By myself I have sworn. Says the Lord. It is after Abraham passed the test. That God now is swearing by himself. And I like the words that were down there. For the interest of time, we will not read. God saying that surely I will bless you. To bless, I will bless you. 
Brethren, it is after Abraham passed this exam that God is coming in. Previously, God had made promises, but he had not made a vow. He had not sworn by himself. But after Abraham passed the exam, God is coming and saying, I now swear by myself that surely I will bless you. Let's appreciate God. It is after you pass the exam that God now comes and he makes a vow. And what he has said, it will come to pass. But you must pass the exam. Tell your neighbor, pass the exam. The second case that I want to submit is found in Daniel chapter number 3. It's a story that we know so well. Of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And the Bible says that King Nebuchadnezzar, he made an image of gold. And he declared that everyone must bow to this image. And everyone must worship the gods of King Nebuchadnezzar. But the Bible says that these young men, when their faith was tested, they told the king that let it be known even if our God will not save us, we will not bow down to the image that you have put and we shall not worship your gods. They stood the exam. It was a tough exam. I read the entire script, uh, chapter and the Bible was saying that the king ordered that the furnace be increased seven times. But nonetheless, these young men stood their ground. And they say, let it be known unto you, whether he saves us or he does not save us, we will not worship your gods. We will not bow down to the image that you have made. And the Bible says in, in verse number 30, give us verse number 30 of the same chapter. That is where I'm headed to, or I'm interested in. And the Bible says, then the king did what? The king did what? Hey, speak to me. The king did what? Promoted. Why did the promotion come? Why did the promotion come? It is because they stood and passed the test. If they did not start their crowd, if they gave in, do you think they would have been promoted? Do you think they would have been promoted? Do you think the same applies to you? Hey, speak to me. Do you think the same applies to you? Yes. Look at your neighbor again and tell them, pass the test. The third case that I want to submit is of Jesus Christ. And we are getting it from Matthew chapter number 4 and verse number 1. Matthew chapter number 4 and verse number 1. And the Bible says that then Jesus was read up by who? Was read up by? By the Spirit. Where was he read into? Into the wilderness. It is the Spirit of God who led Jesus to the wilderness. And as we all know, the wilderness was not a zone of comfort. It was a season of temptations. Jesus fasted for 40 days. And the Bible says that the devil came and tested him. He told him to turn stones into bread. He told him to fall from the highest point of the temple. He told him to worship the devil. But Jesus overcame. One as if you. And in verse number 11, give us verse number 11 of the same chapter. The Bible says that then the devil left him. 
I began by saying, when the test of God has been brought to you, the devil is also there to check whether you will compromise, to give you a suggestion, to give you a shortcut. But when you have stood your crowd, the Bible says the devil left him. And behold, the angels came and did what? They came and ministered to him. But this is after Jesus passed the test. And I began to ask myself, if Jesus himself, being the son of God, and being God himself, would be led to the wilderness to be tested, then who is commanded to sit pretty and think that he will not be tested? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God administers tests. Luke records in chapter number four that after the angels ministered to Jesus, he went to Galilee full of the power of the Holy Spirit and the fame about him spread to the entire countryside. And from there we see for the next three years, Jesus walking in great power. We see him casting demons out. We see him healing the sick. We see him raising the dead. We see him doing great things. And this is because he passed the exam. And fast forward in Matthew chapter 26. And from 38, in the garden of Gethsemane, the Bible says when Jesus realized that the time to be crucified has come, he went to the Mount of Olives and he began to pray. I was reading the Bible and it was saying that he was in great anguish. He said that my soul is overwhelmed to the point of death. And for two times he cried to God his father, requesting him to remove the cup. But the father did not remove the cup. And Jesus went all the way to the cross. And in chapter number 27, I saw Jesus cry and say, Eli, Eli, lama sabakathani, my God, my God, why have you abandoned me? It was a tough test, but God allowed him to go through it. God allowed him to go through it until the point of death. And then I realized in Philippians chapter number two and verse number nine, media give us that verse, because Jesus agreed to pass the test. Therefore, God highly exalted him. Let's appreciate God. Therefore, tell your neighbor, therefore. So when you see the word therefore, I was not very good in English when I was in school. But at least I know, when you see the word therefore, it is a conjunction. It is connecting two things. Because Jesus agreed to go through the shame of the cross. To go through the pain of death. And he passed the exam. Therefore God highly exalted him. And he gave him a name. Which is above every other name. That are the name of Jesus Christ. Every tongue, all the things in heaven, all the things on earth, all the things under the earth shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord for the glory and honor of God. Hallelujah. We must pass the tests. Tell your neighbor, pass the tests. Now, why does God then test us? Why does God test us? Number one. He want to check your faith. Where is your faith founded on? Is your faith founded on your education? 
Is your faith founded on your riches? Is your faith founded on your parents? If God was to touch one of those things, will you still remain faithful to him? How is your faith? Can you be able to say that my faith is built on nothing less? All the other crowds are just by sinking sand. How is your faith? How genuine is your faith? God will test you to see that. If they touch your wealth, if they touch your health, can you be able to stand like Job and say, that naked I came, and naked I will go. God gave, and God has taken. Blessed be his name. Hallelujah. Job said, that even after he slay me, I will still trust in him. Can you be able to say that? When your job is gone, when your health is threatened, when things appear to be going opposite, can you be able to say like Habakkuk chapter number three, give us that. Habakkuk chapter number three and verse number 17. Can you be able to say that though the fig tree may not blossom, no fruit be on the vines, though the labor of the olive may fail, and the fields yield no food, though the frog may be cut off from the fold, and there be no heart in the stores. Give us the next verse. Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. Or you belong to the category when it's shaken. They want to cast God. They even want to leave the church. They want to complain. But it's my prayer that on the day of my exam, I will start there. And I will say even if the fig trees will bear no fruit, yet I will rejoice in the God of my salvation. Hallelujah. The second reason why God would want to test you it is to reveal the content of your heart. When God has subjected you to a test, it is when what is in your heart comes out. Before we got born again, we were all in our own things. But after we have been born again, we are new creature. Some of us used to fight. Today, if someone insults you, will you still fight? If someone does something bad, will you say, Yesu kwanza kado kuja hapa ujue kuokoka si ujinga? Will you be able to, how, what will come out of your heart? God will want to reveal to you your heart. Not that because God does not know your heart, He knows your heart. But he wants to bring it plain to you so that you can rectify and be prepared for the new season. Number three, for greater works, God will subject you to an exam so that you can prove that you have the skills to operate in the new season. I like what Pastor Haman Mwashigadi was speaking to us on Sunday. That we must have the new what? Wine skin. So that the new wine will be put there. So God will test you. To know whether your thinking has changed. Whether you are worthy to go to the new season. Otherwise if you go with the, new, with the old mentality. It cannot work. One as if you will. I thought about this and I remembered sometimes back. We were organizing a funeral meeting. And the budget for food was so high. was more than 100,000. 
And me and uh, another colleague of mine, we were protesting that how can you budget for food 100,000? There is one guy who looked at us and told us, the money and your friend, your problem is poverty mentality. Hallelujah. You are already blessed, but the mentality of luck that you came with from Muranga, the mentality of the village is still disturbing you. That's why you are bringing a lot of points of order, points, points, points in the meeting. Unatusubua kwa mkutano because you still have the old mentality. But God will take you through the test so that he can confirm that now you have a new wine skin. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Point number four is that God will want us to know him deeply. Brethren, you know so well it is in the time of difficulties that you come to know people. Personally, I have been through issues. And when I have gone through them, I have known three types of people. Number one, there are people I thought they were my friends. And I thought in my day of crying, they will be right there. But they were nowhere near. And going forward, I disqualify them from by being my friends. The others who I thought they were my friends, and for sure, the day of my cry, they were there with me. Going forward, they have remained friends. And there is another category that I never thought they were my friends. I never thought they would come to my rescue. But in the day of my trouble, they were there. Going forward, they became friends. Hallelujah. It is in the day of trouble that you get to know people. It is after you have been sick and God has healed you that you come to say, Jehovah is Rapha, the Lord that healed. It is, after, it is after you have been so broke financially. You have been so down. And God has come through for you. That you can start and say, Jehovah Jireh, the Lord, my provider. Hallelujah. It is after you have been through battles. That you come to say, the Lord Sabbath. The mighty man of war, great in battle, he has fought my battles. It is after you have been no, you have had no peace. It is after you have been troubled that you come to know that God is your shalom. He is Jehovah Shalom, the Lord that giveth me peace. Even in the midst of turmoil. So God will subject you through tests. So that you can get to know him better. How do we pass the exam of God? Number one. How do we pass? Expect the exam. Expect the exam. It is this expectation. That will help you not to be disappointed. Not to be frustrated. Not to start wondering whether God is still in control. Expect the exam. Point number two. Prepare to face the tests. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter number 6 and verse number 13. That we therefore put the armor of God. So that when the day of evil will come. We'll be able to stand. And after we have done so, to stand. So prepare for the exam. And number three, depend on God. When you go to the exam, when God brings an exam, we have, most of us try to depend on other things. But I want to urge us, brethren, that we depend on God. 
Hebrews chapter 12 and verses number 1 and 12 and, and 2. It is saying that we run the race that has been marked for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the author and the perfecter of our faith. We must depend on God. We must not go down to Egypt to consult. We must not seek help elsewhere. Because in Isaiah 43, and verse number 2, he says that even when you go through waters, even when you go through fire, I will be with you. Let's appreciate God. We must depend on God. Tell your neighbor, depend on God. When the exam comes, in conclusion, in conclusion, we have said, number one, expect the test of God. It is going to come for sure. Going to come. I like what Bishop Paul tells us. That if it has not come, it is coming. Number two, prepare for the test. And number three is the good news. That you will pass the test. You will pass the test. Give us Romans 8 and verse number 37. We will pass the test. We will not fail. If we remain there, we will pass. The Bible says that yet in all these things, we are more than what? We are more than what? So when the sickness will come, when financial difficulties will come, when whatever will come, the Bible elsewhere says that these are just for a short period. And in all these things, we are more than conquerors. Will you remain there? Will you start? Or you will run away. It is my prayer that you remain. Because when you remain, you will pass. I want to add with what the Bible says. In Hebrews chapter number 11 and verse number 11. Hebrews chapter 11 and verse number 11. Which is my last point. That God is faithful. The Bible says that my faith, uh, by faith, Sarah herself also received strength to conceive seed. And she bore a child. When she was past the age, because she, she, I want us to read together, because she judged him faithful who had promised. He who spoke to us that we are in a new season is faithful. Hallelujah. He's faithful. Even when the exam will come and things will look like we are not in a new season, it is just for a short while. And then we graduate to the new season. Let's appreciate God. Pastor Haman Mwashigadu. No exam, no graduation. That could only come from a teacher. No exam, no graduation. But we thank God because he has, pre he has prepared us beforehand. Because all of us, we are in this new season. And we are expecting from the Lord. Hallelujah. Because in this season, God has promised. In this season, God has spoken even through his servant. But... There is one thing that we didn't know, and the Mualim has put it very clearly, that there would be an exam. And in fact, we fear exams. That part of exams is what we don't want, we don't want to go through. That is not what we don't want to be subjected to. But the Lord has told us through his servant today that, yes, I want to take you to the next level. Yes, I'm ready to take you to the next level in this new season. But I want you to prepare for an exam. Hallelujah. You know, we have been foretold. So that means we have been, we, that, so that we can be prepared. Hallelujah. I like what Mwalimus say that uh, 
for us, for, for Abraham, when he passed the test, and that is we have to pass the test. Now this is the thing that I want us to go home with, that we have to pass the test. This test, we must pass it this season. Because God has promised. And for sure, there's a place we are going. But there is a condition. We have to pass the test. The test will surely come. But for you and me, we have to pass this test. For Abraham, when he passed the test, he was blessed. I know we want to be blessed in this season. But we have to pass this exam. Do you want to go to the next level? For the three Hebrew sons, when they passed the test, they were promoted. I believe that God is going to promote us this season. I believe that most of us, if not all of us, want to be promoted in this season. But the thing is, we have to pass the test. For Jesus, you know, I looked at myself and said, if, if Jesus was tested, then that means even Haman has to be tested. Even you, has to, you have to be tested. So all of us are candidates for this examination. But the good thing is, we are more than conquerors in Christ Jesus. All of us have the ability to pass. All of us can succeed. Hallelujah. Jesus, when he passed the exam, he was given a name which was above every other name. Hallelujah. When he passed the test, the devil fled from him. He left him. You know, some of us, we, we walk like we walk with the devil. But I want to tell you, if you pass the test, the test, the trial that come your way, the devil will leave you and angels will come to minister to you. Praise be to the living God. In, you can see, the whole thing is God has prepared us to pass the test. He has prepared us to pass the test. His intention is for us to pass the test. In fact, there is no place where God is preparing for us to fail. So we are for sure going to the next season. But we also have to know that the test will surely come. The good news is, the one who has promised, he is faithful. And he's saying, I will never leave you. I will not forsake you. That means he will be with you in trouble and he will lift you up and he will exalt you so that you are above. Hallelujah. The one who promised he's faithful to be with us even in the trials, even in the, in the tests. So he will be with us. That's why he says, I will be with you. Even when you go through the waters, I will be with you. Even when you pass through the fires, they will not quench you. They will not burn you down. Why? Because I will be with you. My brother, my sister, I want you to know this. Yes, we will face exams. Yes, we will face tests in this new season. But the one who promised, the one who promised us to take us to the next level, he will be with us. I tell you, that is my comfort. So long, even if I'm going through a test, even if I'm going through a trial, so long as he is with me, I will not be afraid. I will fear no evil. I will fear no evil. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil because I know he is with me. My brother, my sister, he is going to be with you. But exams are for sure. Our graduation is the next level where we are going. But exams are a must. So we have been foretold, which is to be forewarned. Hallelujah. We bless the Lord for, his, for this word. I want us to receive this word. I want us to stand. And maybe you're there. And you're going through a difficult period. And you're wondering, God, I thought you said, this is our year. But we have started the year and already the things that have hit you are discouraging you. I want you to know that the one who promised is faithful. I want to encourage you, and that's why he has sent his servant today. He's, told, he's telling you, this is just but an exam. This is just but a trial. 
You are more than a conqueror, but in Christ Jesus. Let me tell you, brothers and sisters, our victory is in the Lord. We are more than conquerors in Christ Jesus. Without Christ Jesus, we cannot be conquerors. We cannot conquer. We cannot conquer. You are weighed down and you are saying, Pastor, I want you to pray with me. Wherever you are, I want you to come. We can pray with you. Because the word of God has come. He's saying, I want to make you more than a conqueror in Christ Jesus. Are you weighed down? Are you feeling discouraged? When others are feeling like they are excited about this new season, your head is down because of what you're going through. Are you there? You need prayer? Come. Are you there? Come. If you're there, come. You're discouraged. You're saying, I want you, Lord, to hold my hand. You, Lord. Because we are more than conquerors only, only through Christ Jesus. Only in him. Come. Thank you. Come. For sure, we will get to the other side. But it's not by power. It's not by our own might. But by the spirit of the living God. But by his spirit. Are you discouraged? That's why we come to church so that we can be charged. He's here. He's saying, I'm ready. To take you to the next level. He's ready. And he's right here. He's right here. Come. You're saying, God, I need you to strengthen me. I'm feeling the heat. I'm feeling the weight. And it's like I'm giving up. Lord, help me. Thank you, Jesus. If you're coming, come. We'll wait for you. Holding nothing, holding nothing, I surrender, all. I surrender all to you, everything I give to you, yes Lord, we that you care so much the Lord you have sent a word of encouragement to us today exams will come for sure but we are more than conquerors I will not even ask you what it is but I want you to know this you have come you have stepped forward not to any man but to God the one who has promised that it's a new season he meant it it was not a mistake he's not a man that he should lie he'll not say sorry I forgot I didn't mean it for sure he wants to take you to the next level the next level is your place it was meant for you but I want you, even as you're standing in here at this altar, I want you to mention before the Lord. I don't know what it is that has weighed you down. I want you to tell the Lord, Lord, I'm dropping it here at the altar. I want to leave it here at the altar. And I want you, I want you to empower me. I want you to strengthen me. I want you to take me to the next level. I'm discouraged, but I want you to just to come and uphold me with your victorious right hand. And for the rest of us, I want you to stretch forth your hands to our brothers and sisters. Because the next level is for all of us. It's not just for some of us. It's for all of us because he has spoken. Father, in Jesus' name, I want to thank you, Father, for your word today. Thank you, Jehovah God. You have prepared us by foretelling us that indeed we will go through trials. That indeed we'll go through exams. But we thank you, Lord. Because today, you're also reminding us uh, that we are more than conquerors in Christ Jesus. Father, I pray the Lord, you will release grace to overcome. Grace to overcome. I pray, Jehovah God, for my brothers and sisters who could be going through a difficult period. 
yet there is a promise i pray jehovah god that lord today the lord you will stretch forth your hand and that lord you will uphold them with your victorious right hand father may you lift them from the dust may you lift them from the miry clay today i pray for grace to overcome right now in the name of jesus every temptation every trial every exam that has come upon your life uh, i pray for grace to overcome right now in the name of jesus father release grace to overcome grace to overcome thank you jesus thank you lord for your promise it is not just for some of us it's for all of us and for these lord who have come they have faith in you lord i pray that lord you will honor this faith honor the faith of these brethren and father i pray jehovah god that it will please you lord to reward them it will please you lord to bless them it will please you lord to promote them it will please you lord even to give them a new name a new name a new name is your place your new name is is your heritage in jesus name father i thank you because you're changing their situations for better they are acquiring new names favor i thank you lord for that which you are doing in the spirit right now thank you father thank you father for lifting us let's celebrate the lord for what he has done right now and what he's doing you can take your seats and i want you to walk in this confidence that he is for you he is for you and maybe you're here you want to be born again you say you do not know you do not have a relationship with jesus are you there how jaokoka we can wait for you are you there you want to give your life to jesus up there you know what the place where we are going we have to go with jesus it's only him who can help us to get there amen thank you the lord is faithful and we bless the lord for his word hallelujah it's because he knows us and that's why he has given us this this word he has prepared us ahead of time we have to pass this examination and at the end of the year we will all graduate as we celebrate with testimonies upon testimonies about what god has done in our lives because it's a new season it is a new season. I want to call upon our dad who's here with us so that he can come and pray for, uh, receive the offerings and pray for the offerings and also to tell us about his mission. But before I sit down, we had talked about Kitengela. You know, this we will talk, we'll continue talking about it because I am so excited about what God is about to do. I'm excited when God calls me to partner with him in the thing that he wants to do. You know, God is calling us to partner with him in the thing that he wants to do. And let me tell you, it's a privilege. It's always a privilege to partner with God in kingdom building. Hallelujah. Last week when I stood here, I told you that go and consider, prayerfully consider about what you're going to give God in the next month, which is our month of first fruits. On the 12th, we are going to collect that which the Lord has given us. But we want to believe God. In fact, this is what I'm calling it. I'm daring God. I want to tell him, God, if, you, if your word is true, because he said, give and it shall be given back to you. That is, I give to God and it shall be given back to me. He says, same measure, but this time, pressed down, shaken together, then running over will men not angels will men give at your bosom i'm trying god at his word and i know that he is faithful because he watches over his word to perform it and i'm saying god if it is your word i want to dare you so that men will bring at my bosom i like it they say so they'll bring it at your bosom you know that means they'll bring it to you in front so that you can see you know when someone hands you a gift at the back you, you may not recognize but he'll give it to you at your bosom men will bring at your bosom so you will know this i'm receiving because i gave hallelujah 
So I was telling you, we have a plan because we have a target. So we just, we just don't want to shoot aimlessly. I was saying, if one, if seven of us prayerfully consider with your family or maybe your company. No, I know we have companies. So you can see my farm. We are going to give 150,000. If seven of us did that and only 10 said, I'll commit 100,000. 50 of us say, I mean, 20 of us say, I'll commit with my family 50,000. 30 of us say, I will commit 30,000. Another 30 say, I'll commit 20,000. I want you to put yourself in a bracket and I want you to dare God. Then another 30 say, I'll give 10,000. Another group of, th of 50 says, we will give 5,000. I'll dare God in this project with 5,000. Some 50 guys says, I'll dare God with 3,000. We don't want to leave anybody out. We don't want to say, you know, it's so high, I can't fit. Everybody has a place. And I want you to dare your God. In fact, below 3,000, we are taking it even to the Sunday school. Because we have said our DNA is planting churches. Even our children should know. We are going to, we are going to tell the Sunday school to participate. They will also dare God from 3,000 to even 50 shillings to 100 bob. But let everybody be a partaker. Let everybody be a participant in this thing that God is doing. Because some souls are waiting for us to manifest. The Bible says, for the world is waiting for the manifestation of sons. We are the sons. The world is eagerly waiting for us to manifest, to show up. It's dying. The world is dying, waiting for your manifestation. Waiting for you to commit so that a soul may be saved. So that a soul, a soul's destiny may be changed. It takes you and me. And God has given us an opportunity. From next week, we'll have a desk out there. You can come and commit. We will also want to do this. And I believe God will help us. I want us to have like a souvenir, something that you will hold. That will say 150. That will say 50,000. Like the day, those days we had blocks for Jesus. We would take blocks and take them home. And they were for, for 100,000, for 50,000, for 30,000. And you will keep it as a memorial. And say, God, I dared you with this. And I'm waiting that men will come and give me at my bosom. Same measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over. I want you to go and pray about it. I want you to consider if you're going to do it as a family, as an individual, or you're going to do it even with your children. It's an opportunity. It's an opportunity to sow in the kingdom, to partner with God in the great thing that he's going to do in Kitengel. I told you, you'll get to heaven and souls will, come in, will be coming to, to thank you. And you will not remember, what did I do to you? I don't even know you. They'll tell you I was from Kitengela. It is because of you that I'm here. I want you to prayerfully consider. I want us to rise, even as we receive our father, Bishop Dr. Moffat Kilioba. Could we celebrate him even as he comes? You can do better for our father. Amen. Santa, thank you. Santa, Santa, thank you so much. Thank you so much, choir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mwalimu, uh, for the test. Uh, I'm happy he didn't go further, you know. We have many papers. We gather many papers. Uh, but uh, during the time when we are called upon to bring our papers for verification, <laughs> then there are a number of people who don't appear. <laughs> because with the many, many papers they have, they cannot stand the test of verification. Uh, Professor Juma knows this. Because there are some other papers that were gathered on the way that do not meet the standard of verification. Whom did you graduate with? 
you see, those are very difficult questions. And Mualimu has said the test is there. The test is there. And because, let me say something, because we have sat under his feet, he is our Gamaliel. We are not afraid of the test. Because the exam will come from what he taught. How can we fail? Having sat under the feet of Jesus himself, how can you fail? This exam, we must pass. Now we are all going to pass because we have sat under a good teacher. Jesus is our teacher. Somebody say amen. amen. We will share with you about Angola maybe next week. We were so moved, wonderful, uh, about, is it eight years or so when I, I visited Angola, that's uh, the one building the, the, the auditorium there. But we, we, we were in the auditorium today uh, in Angola the other day. Uh, and we worshipped in the, in the main auditorium, filled full. Uh, down, upstairs, almost, uh, uh, it, it sits about 16,000. And has outlets, one of them has 2,000 outlets, another one, I don't know, 1,000 outlets, and so forth on the sides, in the main auditorium. And it was an experience we will live with, to see the people dancing in the presence of God. I pray that God will bring celebration in our Donum Pefa Church. So that with all our dignity and, and uh, all the dignity, dignified men and women, we can come here like David of old and be able to freely dance in the presence of God. Amen? Freely dance in the presence of God. If anybody wants to think or say, let them think and say. But let them think and say when you are at least doing something, not quiet. Do something to allow them to think and say. Wile dada na dance sana. Kwani yeye tu ndiye anajua ku dance. That's that's not bad. At least you are doing some something. Usikae tu hapo nde. Na hiyo itakuwa ni nzuri. We are going to give and we thank God for the opportunity to give. I am looking forward to, to is it 12th next, week, next month? Yeah, we'll be happy to give. And in the future, some of those projects just need a few people. Because with all the kind of prayers we are praying here, we are believing God this year that we are going to have millionaires here, isn't it? So anybody, somebody here with the faith of a millionaire, say amen like me. Amen. Amen. The faith of a millionaire, say Amen. amen. I said the faith of a millionaire, say amen. amen. I mean, what I'm saying is this, if your business is not doing well, this is the year. This is the year. And if God visits your business and it begins to do extremely well, when we come here to give, we don't want to disturb everybody. Just a few people. Ask some, what is the budget? Little million tungapi tunatakiwa. Kama ni kumi, look for te, ten people. Pass. Wambie hiyo sorted out. We opened a church there the other day, new, that seats about 2,000 people. Fully, fully completed and fully furnished. And we are going to open it. Built, fully, furnished, Equipment, everything. And we went with a pastor. That was very good. I liked that. Kitengela, we need to go there with serious stuff. Something really good. Okay? And we should be able to open many more churches, not just Kitengela. Kitengela should be number one, followed by another and another and another. That's the work we are here to do. Sindio? To consider prayerfully with your family and say what is it that I am going to bring on the altar on 12th of this coming month. You and your household 
so that we take that offering quietly and it is enough to clear us to Kitengela and that's the direction we are going to go. I am going to finish by saying this. When we began to build here, there are men and women who are in the house today who are there then. We sat down in our board of, uh, in our board, uh, of leadership and we inquired, do we bring, because we were also connected, there are men we could have brought here or women to help us fundraise. So we asked ourselves, whom are we going to call as our guest of honor? And we agreed, no, our guest of honor is Jesus. We are calling nobody. And listen, ladies and gentlemen, we never called a guest of honor to come and raise funds here. That was number one. Number two, we also agreed this idea of I give 10,000, nana nazindikisha, so and so, and so and so. We said those gimmicks and those games are not fit for the kingdom men and women of Donom. We said out of the door. So whatever you give, you give it from your heart and God sees it and God knows it and that's all we need. So we don't announce people's giving on the altar. We allow people to give and there are people who generously give from their hearts for the glory of God. Pray with your family. Consider how much you will give on that day. Come, let us give and the Lord will bless us. We are going to give our offerings those who are doing it online, uh, we have our pay bill number. Is what? 50? 57? 207? 78. 57, 78. You can do it that way. And if you are bringing cash, you bring it here. As the choir gives us a number, then I'll pray after we do that. Karibuni, let's do it now.
Amen, amen. Shall we pray for the offering? Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for the opportunity to give. We pray your blessings on every giver this morning. You know the condition from where they've come from. You know their position. And you are our God who knows how to elevate. Touch each one of us in a special way. And bless our giving. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Touch with us for now.